Hey YouTube! In this lesson we are going to be getting into envelopes and I'll be using Animog for this because it's got a great visualization of envelopes as you see here. And it's also got a great uh, oscilloscope. We perceive sound as a series of frequencies that are changing and oscillating and the oscilloscope gives us a great view of how sound is a series of amplitudes changing over time. <laughs> So as you see here, you got all these peaks and troughs, and that determines the characteristic of the sound here. Uh, the up and down is the amplitude, and the left and right is time. So as I hit this C, you see how this is moving much slower than this C? And that's the frequency changing uh, with our pitch. But the character of the sound itself is controlled by all of these peaks and troughs here. And envelopes give us an opportunity to further change the sound over time. And what you see right here is the envelope that controls uh, just the volume, the amplitude. And this pattern right here is referred to as a gate. And that means that when I hit the button, we hear a sound. And as soon as I let go of the button, you do not hear the sound anymore. And this is an attack, decay, sustain, release uh, ADSR envelope. And what that means is the first control here is the attack. And the attack controls how our volume is ramping up here. So over here with no attack, it starts off at its maximum volume, and if I throw it all the way over here to the right, we have this real slow buildup. So just changing the attack, we go from having a stabby sound to a well, what we refer to as a pad sound. The second control we have is our decay, and that uh, leads right into our sustain. So let me uh, first show you the sustain here so you understand what's going on. Uh, let me crank up this so you can hear it a little clearer. Now hear how it's going to spike up and then fall right down. So you can still kind of hear it and as I raise the sustain, that's increasing the volume. The sustain is where it's going to be at after it does its decay. So that's our third portion, right? We've got the attack and the sustain here. And this is our decay. So now listen to how this sounds. Hear how it ramped up and then it slowly came down to our sustain level. And it's important to note that all of these are logarithmic. So having the uh, decay here in the middle is kind of a gradual slope, but if I move this all the way over to the right, it's uh, gonna take a really, really long time for it to get down to its sustain level. See, that took forever. And you're gonna have to start thinking a little bit logarithmically because a lot of controls in music applications and, and such are all using a logarithmic scale. Uh, so that just basically means that over here we have uh, a lot of uh, subtlety. But as soon as we get to anything past the halfway point, it uh, will be changed dramatically by even the, the subtlest changes. And our last control is the release. And that is what's playing after you release the uh, key. So let me give it a little bit of this. And a little bit more. See, I'm not touching, you, you can tell when I'm touching it, when I got this little indicator here. And uh, I'm touching it now. 
but it still continues to play and, and in fact, uh, be lit up uh, long after I've released it. So let me show you how this can change our synths to sound like different instruments. I'm going to reduce the attack a little bit and bring down the sustain a lot and bring down the release a bit. And now I get kind of this plucking sound, right? So it sort of sounds like a uh, upright bass or something where it's got this quick thunk, thunk, thunk. With a little trail off as the string would continue to vibrate. And if you bring up the sustain and bring out the attack a little bit more. We have a more typical synthy sound. If you take your sustain and bring it all the way down to the bottom and play around with the release a little bit, you can get kind of a piano sound. But experimentation and playing around with the idea that you want to achieve is key here, where you're just playing around with you know, all these various uh, parameters until you hear what you're going for. You know, do you want it to have a quick attack where it just goes right into the sound and maybe you want it to trail off at the end? It's all up to you and that's what uh, envelopes are all about is giving you control over the character of your sound. Another envelope that we have in both the Animog as well as IMS-20 is the filter. And this should look familiar to all you guys that uh, were following me through the Technobox tutorials. As I went into a pretty detailed discussion of this, uh, right now it's configured just for the decay with no sustain and no attack and no release. And we crank up our envelope amount. This is something we also have in both IMS-20 and in Technobox 2. Uh, it's called different things, but that's the envelope amount. And that's controlling how much the filter envelope is going to peak our filter cutoff. So right now our frequency is at six and you've been listening to it at that level. With the envelope amount now cranked, it'll sound like this. So that's the frequency getting maxed out and then ramping down real quick. So it goes up to 10 and then down to six, uh, which is what we've got set here. And I will increase the decay here. You hear how all those higher frequencies are slowly dropping out now as we've got this huge uh, decay. And you can play around with the envelope amount and that affects how high the initial frequency uh, change is going to be. And in this instance, we've also got our attack and sustains. So as you listen to that, hear how the attack is making the uh, frequency shift ramp up slowly, and then the decay is making it come back down. So without the attack, it just starts off high and comes down with a massive attack. All right, now it's peaking out. As I said, the logarithmic stuff means that when it's way over on the end, it's way over on the end. But now it's coming back down. And you can hear how much that's changed our sound. You know, when we started off, it was just making this stabby noise. Now it's got all kinds of character throughout. The mod envelope, I'm not even going to show you because it's basically just a 
auxiliary envelope that you can assign to different things using uh, the source here and mod and then giving it these destinations. But uh, Animog is kind of limited in the destinations. When we get back into the IMS-20, I'm going to show you how we can assign envelopes to do all kinds of crazy shit. But one last thing I wanted to show you here was the uh, Legato, uh, which I turn on here. And this is going to change the way that our envelopes are triggered. And previously, whenever I hit a key, it would trigger the envelope where it'd start over again with whatever attack and, and move from there. In legato mode, it won't re-trigger immediately. I have to leave a gap in between my sounds before it's going to try to re-trigger the envelope. So uh, now that we got the legato on, I can go. And if I play with a space in, in between the keys, it sounds like this. You know, that's exactly what we had before, except now if I rapidly go to a new key, it's not re-triggering that whole attack buildup and all that other stuff. It's maintaining that same level that it's worked its way to. And this can be really important for uh, complex arrangements where you don't want it to constantly do this huge spike. Like that sounds cool, right? That filter sweep, that sounds cool, but you don't necessarily want every note to be doing that. And legato is one of the many different options you have in the IMS-20 sequencer, which we will get into a lot more as we progress here.